Hello everybody, today I am going to discuss an essay titled Forgetting by Robert Lind. So Robert Lind is quite a famous, well-known essayist who was a freelancer, then worked as a staff writer for daily and then also became editor of that, literary editor of that. Then he also wrote under the pseudonym of YY and um, there, there has always been an elegance and fluency in his essays. Uh, he always maintained that level in all his essays and uh, the best of his essays, the Herring Fleet, became the classics of the 20th century. So there was always a kind of humor, a touch of humor in his works, uh, a kind of, uh, I should say, satire as well. Um, in his works and it, it always tickled the readers and the present one which is titled as I said forgetting has also that touch of humor in, inherent in that it is really quite amusing to read and as I am gonna narrate that is really quite interesting I, I, I feel that it you will be um, you will like that so what is this essay about? This is about a common tendency of people and that is forgetting, absent-mindedness. People generally forget things, they are absent-minded. So it's about the absent-mindedness that why it is so, that why people tend to uh, forget things, why are they absent-minded or uh, so all the aspects of forgetting uh, has been touched upon here. Uh, the poet has uh, given a, we can say, a wide perspective of forgetting here uh, uh, and that too in a very humorous manner, quite an interesting manner. So how it begins actually, so a list has been published at a grand station of London, great uh, London station and the list is of uh, the lowest articles by, yes of course by the travellers. So, and now they are on sale. So, looking at the list, one may wonder that how people forget things. But the writer says that I don't wonder because of uh, at, uh, at the tendency of uh, weak memory of people. So, I don't wonder at that. Actually, the writer says of statistical reports are available. If uh, we have the statistics, if we have the data, then we would come to know that um, rather than absent-mindedness, uh, we should wonder at the good or efficient memory of people. People really have very good memory, people really have efficient memory. So, and this absent-mindedness or forgetting is generally not that uh, big. Generally, people have uh, good memories in different matters. So that's what the writer is trying to say here because people remember the phone numbers of um, the uh, their fam acquaintances, their relatives and all though now in today's perspective we can say people don't remember the phone numbers because now have, we have mobile phones and uh, we just feed the number and we don't have to remember so but as the essay was written quite uh, earlier or some time back in the past so uh, in those times it was really quite a usual thing and people really remembered uh, phone numbers of their acquaintances and their relatives. So in that uh, context we can understand this. So the writer says that people uh, remember phone numbers, people remember the names, uh, the addresses of their friends and relatives, people remember the names of actors, actresses. Uh, cricketers, footballers, even murderers. So how how efficient their memory is. They even remember uh, that what the weather was like in the last September or in some particular month in the past or they remember that they had a wild meal at some, some, means some bad um, a meal at some uh, restaurant in the past. So how efficient they are and there would be few uh, who would actually uh, forget to just 
turn off the lights or um, close the door before leaving out of their ha house and the writer says how many people how many men um, might forget uh, the part of their clothing while dressing up uh, have you have you ever seen that people uh, for, uh, forget uh, just uh, or they they wear they put on their shirt and forget wearing the pants or they uh, put on pants and forget wearing the shirt so how many people might be there generally not in hundred not even one in a thousand so in general we can say people have very good memories people don't do that kind of absurd things and there are but there are now the poet the writer says that there are certain matters in which actually memory uh, function less perfectly than the others and that is particularly in the matter of taking medicines so the writer says there are some methodist some methodical people so only they may remember taking medicines on time otherwise people in general forget to take medicines now it's quite an easiest thing to remember because generally pills are to be taken either before meals or after meals so it's the easiest thing to remember even then people forget taking medicines so and uh, people may say that it might be due to uh, the antipathy or reluctance in taking pills that people generally don't like taking medicine so that might be the reason that they they don't they forget to take pills it might be the antipathy actually but the writer says it's not so we cannot say even that because a lifelong devotee of medicines like me it means the writer he is saying that he is uh, for the uh, he is kind of a person who has to take medicines all through the life so he says a lifelong devotee of me uh, even me uh, forget to take medicines um, I, uh, actually the writer he says that he is delighted by uh, the uh, adverti uh, some uh, widely advertised care all and so when he sees some good uh, care all or some good medicine uh, some advertisement of some medicine so he delighted by that and even then he says that though he carries medicine in his pocket even then he forgets to uh, take the pill so we cannot say that it is the antipathy it is something else it's not antipathy even so uh, that's why he has given uh, the example of himself here that how uh, his type of people even so only a very methodical person uh, can remember taking pills now the other thing about uh, forgetting he says the commonest form of forgetfulness is about posting letters and here too we can say now people generally uh, write letters or post letters because we have so many social media platforms we don't have to uh, write letters or so so this tendency is now uh, uh, going down declining so but here in that context as it has been written earlier so we can take or understand this so the poet says the writer says sorry that uh, the commonest form of forgetfulness is about posting letters uh, the writer says uh, I, I i don't trust anybody in the matter of posting a letter in general if i have to hand a letter to somebody to post it i just make him take an oath means he just compel that person to take a pledge taken out that he he won't forget to post that letter so uh, and he says if uh, somebody and uh, he is not we can say uh, vindicating himself or he is not just uh, um, sparing himself he says if somebody trust me to post a letter then he is a, a bad judge of characters because when he says uh, i i carry the letter with me but you know i remember only when i pass the first pillar box and then um, it happens several times and finally what the writer does he puts that into his pocket and uh, just uh, forget about it 
uh, and then what when series of questions follow that uh, and create embarrassing situations for the writer and then he has to produce the letter as an evidence of his guilt. It means the writer is trying to say that he too is a very uh, or he too has a very bad memory regarding posting letters and he says people might say that it might be due to uh, lack of interest in other people's letters but he says no uh, we cannot say even that the reason is I sometimes the writer I sometimes forget to post the letters written by me important letters even so how can we say that it's about or it's due to the lack of interest in other people's letters no it's not that now um, he talks of leaving articles and things that as for leaving articles and things in uh, while traveling in trains and buses so he says uh, he too is quite irresponsible in that though he remembers uh, except generally it is not so that he's saying that generally uh, he remembers and but it happens in the matters of what uh, walking stick and books and then he says even books he remembers even books he remembers but walking sticks is really very impossible or very difficult for him to remember um, the walking sticks or keeping those walking sticks whenever whenever he visits a friend or just uh, travel to some place some destination what happens that another walking stick is on its way to the world of the laws that means he forgets it there so it's very difficult to remember uh, keeping the walking stick always and so he is quite he, he um, generally what he doesn't carry a walk, walking stick for fear of losing it and he he questions that is there any man in this world even the grimace joe a very uh, we can say grave sort of person uh, ever uh, escaped losing a walking or forgetting a walking stick he he kind of seems to be uh, betting on it that uh, there won't be a single person there won't be a person in this world who might not have forgotten his walking stick uh, even once in his life so that's what he is trying to say here and in general he says that in general people remember uh, carrying their uh, bags and their trunks and luggage generally people don't forget and there is their destination with all the things safe but um, the the young people as he's saying the young people tend to have or seems to have uh, weak memory or they tend to forget more than the adult one and that generally we know we see because they are quite careful they have good experience of life so they are quite careful about these things and they uh, take care of their things but the young people they actually forget and the sportsmen the writer says the sportsmen have worst memories and what happens th there are reasons behind that uh, as well like while returning from some game while returning from the field uh, either they are and they are with their heads high among the stars or their heads uh, or their heart in the boots it means either they are uh, they celebrate the happiness of winning the game or they are quite depressed at losing the game so they are quite uh, they are they are aloof and cut off from the world of reality they are in the abstract world and in such a condition it is it seems quite trivial to remember the things like uh, ball and bat and all such they uh, there are important things to uh, just to be indul to indulge in and such so these things don't matter for them at that point of time and they are they seem to be quite uh, petty and then the writer talks about the anglers that is the fishermen that they are said to be the most imaginative of men in this world 
and what happens to them they forget their fishing road they uh, they remain busy in their dreams and uh, or while fishing they busy uh, there in the fishing and when they return they forget their fishing road there and the reason is they are lost they are lost in some other land they are lost in their imagination in their dreamlands and perhaps they have matters more glorious to remember or think of than uh, the fishing road so their fishing road is kind of tribute to the things that they are uh, lost in imagining or thinking of that's what the writer says and then uh, it is now uh, the poet here gives us an example of uh, the writers like Coleridge that who would think of uh, people like Coleridge or other such poets to remember posting letters definitely they have more important things to do than posting a letter doing such trivial job and now finally he is coming to more important thing and he is saying that it has often been discussed that is it really quite desirable to have a good memory and those who don't have good memory uh, make a case uh, of it to uh, establish their superiority about it means uh, saying that uh, this forgetting or say good memory is not necessary and they uh, quote examples uh, in support of this they say that there are people there are students and people with excellent memories but they are not first intellect they are not very intelligent people they are uh, like machines of memory they are learning machines but they are not intelligent so they quote such examples in the support of absent mindedness and forgetting and then uh, the writer says but uh, there are poets and there are music composers who have excellent memories and they are intelligent as well uh, poets have uh, better memories than the stockbrokers and now he talks about the statesmen the statesmen have worst memories if we uh, if we ask two uh, statesmen to recall some incidents the, the same incident in the cabinet meeting then each of them would narrate a totally different account of that and would blame the other for uh, being totally audacious perverter of truth uh, that one is uh, uh, just uh, telling a lie utter and complete lie so it would be like that it means the writer is trying to say uh, perhaps uh, the world is yet to produce the world is yet to produce the statesmen who have uh, me better or good memory sound memory and intellect because the frequency with which we find uh, their autobiographies and their their facts being challenged it is it's really uh, it really seems to be a truth because and uh, we know uh, the, the way they take a U-turn, what they say in public and then the next moment they take a U-turn from that. So this is quite obvious and quite a clear truth about the statesmen that either they have uh, worse memories or they tend to um, behave like that or show like that. Now in the final part, the writer is telling us a story. Uh, he's, he's trying to say that in general people have good memory and so if one doesn't have a good memory is supposed to be an eccentric person a cynical sort of person an idiosyncratic sort of person and uh, he is uh, narrating a story here that there was a man who went out with his uh, baby just uh, in, a, in a perambulator out for a ride and as the atmosphere was quite good so tempted by that sunny morning what he felt he felt like having some drink actually a public house was there so when he saw that public house so he thought of going for a uh, just a peg of or say a glass of 
beer or so. So he left the child there and went inside. Now after some time his wife was to or had to go for some shopping and she passed by that public house and she was uh, when she was kind of aghast and horror stricken when she saw the baby there and uh, was appalled by the absent mindedness or carelessness of her husband and what she did she took the baby or carried the baby back home and she was so angry that and in that anger she she even like uh, she thought of the horror she imagined the horror of her husband the a trembling and quivering lips of the husband when he would come out and find the uh, uh, find the baby missing so she imagined all that and with that she uh, came back home but now you can uh, you yourself can imagine the vexation the trouble and the horror and the anger of that lady when her husband returned later in the afternoon and went to his wife and said uh, well dear what's there for lunch today forgetting everything uh, about the baby that he had taken the baby out uh, for a ride so he forgot all those things so really we can imagine the kind of situation the wife must have felt herself so the writer says that good memory is really quite necessary for institutions like family and marriages otherwise god knows what would happen in this world so in general people have good memories but yes there are cases uh, in which people tend to forget things so this is just an amusing essay on the tendency of forgetting or absent mindedness of people about certain cases it's not that people are generally uh, absent minded they they really have good memories and they remember things very well but in certain cases they uh, tend to forget things so it's a it's it's an essay on that and i i hope you you might have enjoyed this and you might like this and you may tell me that what next you would like me to come up with definitely i'll try to do that until then thank you very much